Kneers the Neighbors, or someone called KNN, uh, is probably one of the most the simplest um, machine learning model. Uh, so once again, so Kneers Neighbors, the neighbor is defined by looking at each sample data in those multi-dimensional space. So for example, let's, let's first talk about a simple one. So let's say that we have some house records. We have the number of the um, bedrooms. And also we have the number of the bathrooms. OK. And also we have the price. Uh, so if you want to look to predict uh, the the number of bedroom and to predict the price based on the other two number of bedroom and also bathroom. So for example, we have bedroom, bathroom, so that's the first one. Uh, we have bedroom, bathroom, and we have another one, bedroom, um, bathroom. So first we are going to define the neighbors. So in this case, we put the two independent variables into this two-dimensional um, chart. So here, this is the number of the bedroom. And this is the number of the bathroom. OK, so now we have the uh, those three sample points. So the first one, that is 2 by 1. So that is the, our first point. Our second point is 2 by 2. OK, two bathroom, two, uh, uh, two bedroom. Our third point is that uh, three bed bedroom and also two bathroom. Okay, so this is not a great example. So let's let's say we have another one which has um, uh, let's say uh, one bedroom and also one bathroom. So that is this point. Okay, so now we we can map those each single point or each single house record as a vector. Uh, so we can calculate the distance. Um, so in this case, it's again, it's not a great example because the distance is similar. Okay, it's it's pretty much similar. So, um, uh, so we are looking at those neighbors. So suppose that we have another um, house that has a lot of so let's say far away from here. Okay, and that's a big house that has a lot of bedrooms and also a lot of bathrooms. So. We would see that those group of houses they probably have the similar price, and also those group of, of the houses they have slightly higher price. Okay, and because that we uh, the neighbors, so they can calculate the distance for each single neighbors, and we can also notice that this house and this house, their distance is far away from each other, so we can also assume that their difference of the house price is also bigger. OK, and also those prices of those houses will definitely is lower than this one. OK, so that is the key nearest neighbors. So first, we have to identify the neighbors. Identify neighbor means that we map those sample points into this n-dimensional space, where each dimension is uh, have the value for each single column corresponding to one uh, single column. So here we have two independent variables, so that is a two-dimensional space. And if we have three independent variables, that will be a three-dimensional space. If we have 100 independent variables, that will be a 100-dimensional space. OK, so that is what we call the neighbors. And the principle of the key nearest neighbors. So uh, in geography, we know that the first law of geography, geography is that Everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related than the distant things. So, for example, if we go to our, uh, if we have few sample points that are close to each other, so for example, they may have similar price, and if we have another group of the uh, houses close to each other, then they may also have a similar price. Okay, so that is a basic idea of the. Uh, k nearest the neighbors and k nearest neighbors and k will determine that how many neighbors are considered when we make the prediction so k indicate the number of the neighbors 
okay so number of the neighbors so if you k equals one so that is just they are close to the neighbors k equals two so they're close to two neighbors k equals three so they are close is, is three neighbors okay so that's the model to make a prediction for new sample points, the algorithm find out the closest points in the training data as its nearest neighbors. Okay, so here for example we have two groups, um, the blue and also red, two uh, two groups. And next we are going to for each single new data. So those stars, those are cons those are new data. We identify their closest, in this case, three neighbors. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And in this case, we are talking about two independent variables because we are on a two dimensional map. Uh, so depending on their closest neighbors, then we are going to predict either the class or the value uh, for each new data. So for example, if that is a classification okay if that is classification and we are going to say okay so uh, for this point two neighbors are in red one neighbor is blue so for this new point we, we predict that one as red so we gave it the majority of the neighbor of the class of their neighbors and for this single point two neighbors are red one neighbor is blue so this this new sample point will also be be predicted as red. Okay, two neighbors are red, and also one neighbor is blue. So this new sample will also be be predicted as red. Uh, for this one, all three neighbors are blue. So this one will be predicted as blue as well. So that is for the classification. For the regression, if we are talking about regression, then we calculate the average of the values. So for example. For this one, so we know that the value for this one is 4, uh, 5, and 3. Regression is predicting the result. And the value for this one will be the average 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay, regression will calculate the average. And for this one, for example, those values will be uh, of 3, 2, and also 1. And the average will be 1 plus 2 plus three divided by three so that's the number of the neighbors and for this one that probably is zero one one and the res predict result will be one plus one plus zero divided by three so for regression we predict by using the average of their values of their neighbors for classification we just select the majority class of their neighbors so the k nearest neighbor uh, model they don't like they don't look at the, the data as a whole set they only look at the data of the closest points that just a few sample points that is close to those new points okay so that is the key nearest neighbor so that is the basic concept of the key nearest neighbor uh, before we go to detail about KN so let's talk about split data so when we split the data for like to split data for the training and also for the uh, testing and also testing okay so there are several ways that we can split the data so we can just randomly split the data so shuffle the data before the splitting so that you randomly splitting and then we use that one a lot in our previous labs like especially for the regressions so that is the random splitting. So shuffling, shuffle the data before splitting. Or we can stratify a random sample. Okay, so this is a very great way to that when we split data for classification. Okay, this is great for the classification. The first one, normally we use that one for regression. Okay, so for regression models. And the second one is for the classifications. So stratified random splitting means that uh, we divide the members of the population into the heterogeneous subgroups before splitting so we can minimize the biases when we select the, the samples so for example that uh, this is our original data and we know that we have 
uh, one fourth of the data is white and half of the data um, is black and also one fourth of the data is gray. Okay, the population is gray. And we do the samplings, we will make sure that in our samples that half of them will still be black, a quarter or one fourth will be white and also one fourth will be gray. So that is stratified random sampling will give us. So that is very, very helpful when we uh, split the data for the classifications. So for example, in our sample data, we have a majority of, let's say, 80% of the house are the single family home, 10% is condo, and also 10% is um, a townhouse. And when we split the data for the training and also for the testing, okay, for the testing, for the training, um, if we use stratified random sampling, so uh, we see that in majority that 70% go for training and also 30% go for uh, testing. And within the training and also within the testing, so if we apply this stratified sampling, we will have the same distribution of those each type of the houses. So like we will have 80% as a single family as well, 10% as a condom, and also 10% as a townhouse. And for the testing data, 80% we have the single family, 10 will be the condom, and 10 will, 10 will be the townhouse. So by doing that, we can minimize the bias, the biasness uh, from the sampling. Okay, otherwise, if your training data is biased, then your result will not, be, your model will not perform well on the testing data. 